Months ago, Netflix announced on their Twitter that a new exclusive 3D CGI Sonic the Hedgehog animated series was coming to their platform, and that the series is being made by Wild Brain Entertainment. Later on, their post on Twitter was shortly deleted after the announcement, possibly due to Sega wanting to still keep it under wraps. Fast forward on May 27, 2021, Sega made a livestream event on the Sonic the Hedgehog YouTube channel, officially announcing the claims from Netflix to be true. The name for the new series, Sonic Prime, a 24-episode series for the Blue Blur. Brought on as showrunners and executive producers for the show were Man of Action, who are well known for making the Bed 10 franchise and working on the Big Hero 6 animated series as well. The alleged premise slash story of the series is about Sonic's adventure to travel around the quote, multiverse, and save each universe. The show is set to premiere worldwide sometime in 2022. Well, with news like that, all sounds completely great for the Needle Mouse, right? Well, for some people, if you are a newcomer to the franchise, maybe. But for me, sort of a longtime fan from this franchise, yeah, I'm kind of into it, but also hesitant at the same time. And to me, it might make problems that I would want this to avoid if that's okay. This isn't a hate video against the people running the show. No, this is more of a criticism video of things I would want from the TV series Sonic Prime. Let's get into it. Number 1. Sonic's Design Okay, this list is not me specifically hating Sonic's design from the concept art I've seen. It's not like the whole green eyes or blue arms controversy with Sonic Adventure and Sonic Boom. I think it does look really good, but I also think Sonic looks a little more like his video game counterpart. I might get some flack for this, but I would like to see that spiky quill design Sonic had from the Sonic Boom reboot franchise to make him look a little more distinctive. Same with Shadow, like what the Sonic movie did with Sonic's quills, or what Eddie LeBron did for the Sonic fan film with his quills as well, emphasizing more of his animal hedgehog trait, making him look a little more distinctive. Yeah, Sonic Boom wasn't perfect, and it didn't sit well with some fans of the Sonic franchise, but I could give it a little more credit of what it was trying to do for the character's design. Try and make the main characters native animal-like islanders, but keep some core partly true to their character, which I could get by and understand. It was just done dirty and mishandled, and showed what could have been. Oh, and if you are aware about Sonic Boom and its reception, could I just offer a little advice? If Knuckles will be in this series, please don't make his design on par with what Sonic Boom did. Like I said, Sonic Boom wasn't perfect, and so wasn't Knuckles. I do get what Boom was trying to emphasize with his character being the muscle of the group. I mean, it is how he did start off from the beginning. But they did it a little too much. I would like to see that design again visited, but maybe done a little correctly, like these pieces of fan art. But yeah, I don't think I should be speaking of a character design considering I'm not a staff on the show, and many people seem to have more ideas on how Sonic and his friends should look like, which could also be a core part of the fandoms and series problem. But I would like to see these design concepts done similar, but more properly. Again, I shouldn't tell a creative visionist what to do, but still. Anyways, moving on. Number 2. Tone and Identity Sonic's story tone has been all over the place, including now in recent years, with Sonic Lost World being a painful try-hard comedy routine, but also trying to take itself seriously, to now Sonic Forces trying to be serious, but also being a little more tongue-in-cheek, but still failing in the storytelling department. Heck, I could even include the claimed Dark Age games from 2005 through 2009 as well, with some flimsy execution, with some narratives, interesting in concepts, but falling short in being a little inconsistent. I will get straight to the point of this one. I would love personally to see Sonic having more of a semi-serious storytelling narrative, 
Many people seem to think that Sonic having a little bit of a serious tone is a completely bad thing, to which I more agree to disagree. I like to quote YouTuber Shay May, who I think says it perfectly than I ever could. I feel that Sonic can have a compelling adventure that takes itself seriously, so long as it does so with the understanding that it is a cartoon hedgehog that is fundamentally aimed at children. And heck, there were other franchises that went on a similar route as Sonic, narrative tone-wise, and decided to be as, I quote, semi-serious. And some of them are still memorable, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Spyro the Dragon, Teen Titans, and heck, even your series, Man of Action, with the Ben 10 franchise and Capcom's Mega Man franchise, which you also worked on to a certain extent. Now, I want to talk specifically about you, Wildbrain. You were the parent organization of Cookie Jar, who merged with used to be well-known Deke Entertainment, who used to make okay to awful video game show adaptations. And this was also a thing you did for Sonic when he was big at the time. Yeah, there was The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which was more Sonic but Looney Tunes, there was also Sonic Undergrounds, which was about Sonic having siblings and that they are both in a garage band for Revolution. Yeah, that was a thing. But the more widely accepted cartoon, or what I think of what I believe to the many consensus of the Sonic fandom is the most popular out of the three, and that is Sonic the Hedgehog, or Sad AM. It had style, it had a compelling narrative, it had characters with personality that felt like you could relate to them. It felt like taking the Genesis games in a complete arc. And that's what I mean, when you have a clear focused vision of some aspect of a character, you can do amazing stuff. Number 3. Effort. The reason I bring this up, because I know this isn't your first time handling a video game IP. Remember Mega Man Fully Charged? Yeah, barely anyone else does, I bet. What was supposed to revitalize the Mega Man IP became more of the most divisive and seemingly a disappointment to many fans of the Blue Bomber. Mostly because you guys and Man of Action included seem to have made not necessary changes for the franchise, like changing Mega Man's well-known name Rock to Aki, Mega Man having a little robot buddy inside his head named Mega Mini, yeah that's his real name, replacing Roll with new character Suna, which by the way I found out from a certain YouTuber that there was a poster of Roll in two episodes of the show. Was that supposed to be a reference to her? Or was she actually planned to be added later on in that series? I would love to know. To be equally fair to the show, I've watched every episode of your first season and finished it completely, but I don't think you guys really pulled it off with the execution. Add that to the fact that you placed it on Cartoon Network, where it had the worst time slot of starting at 6.30 a.m. when people could have better things to do, Cartoon Network's treatment of the show, and, well, no offense to the writers, but kind of mediocre and not so captivating storytelling too. Again, I'm not trying to discredit everyone's involvement with the TV series. I believe it did have something. Like, the animation with the action scenes were a little fluid and somewhat enjoyable. But the rest of the show ended up feeling like a stereotypical kids show slock. And I know everyone in the comments of this video might say, It's for kids! Let it slide! And I used to think that a little bit too. But no, when you try to have implications of war themes and the consequences of it, and technology revolution, and including to a certain extent, racism, I would want that to be followed up with a little more depth. And I don't think the show did it that well. Mr. Ian Flynn, I heard you are the consultant of Sonic Prime. If that is true, could I offer some advice to maybe give to Wildbrain or Man of Action? 
can you convince them to hire the animator and writer of a certain underrated show that came on Disney XD? Motor City, created and written by Chris Pironeski. This show had a tone that was semi-serious, but worked, was action-packed, filled with life by having high bumping adrenaline and stakes, and had a cohesive storytelling that came all together, and it felt like a spiritual successor to the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, and what it was missing. A little bit of... Conviction. Sadly, the show was short-lived and didn't get the recognition it deserved, and to me, felt like an unappreciated hidden gem. But I do think Sonic Prime could take its place in being that. Plus, not to mention the series does revolve around driving cars, and the Sonic series did dabble in something similar to that. So if there was any way you could get Chris Pironeski to do an episode based off of that, that would be fucking awesome. Number 4. Characters. I'll try to get straight to the point with this one, but I want the video game and comic characters from both IDW and Archie Comics to be in this series. Yes, I would want some of the Archie characters to appear in this show too. I'll elaborate more on this point later on, but I want to see Zonic the Hedgehog slash Zone Cop. Remember him? I'm certain Sega might not want to. He was an alternate dimension version of Sonic in his own universe called the No Zone, which is a place that is a 90 degree perpendicular zone that intersects all parallel zones from other worlds. Yes, that was a real thing. The story of this character started in one of Archie's Super Sonic special that was a spin-off continuity of the main series comics, and it makes me wonder if the show is going to be based off of that. It was basically Sonic having many altercations with facing many troubled interactions along with Zonic trying to save Dare and every other zone slash dimension to maintain order from either natural disasters or evil doing. Such as... A female version of Dr. Robotic who faces up against a Sailor Moon reference Sally Acorn and Amy Rose, and Power Ranger version of Sonic and his friends, with Sally being their evil version of Rita Repulsa, and also along with Godzilla-like Sonic characters that Sonic fights with a mech that was made by a good version of Dr. Eggman slash Robotnik. <laughs> and that's just the tip of the iceberg. It gets really crazier later on, but these are some of the concepts I wouldn't mind seeing done properly. And remember when I said I wanted to see video game characters in this TV show? Well, I want the show to go even further with its premise and even acknowledge some of video game Sonics, like Classic Sonic. Which, I know that some fans are tired of him after Sonic Forces, which I completely understand. There was no reason for his addition in that game. And Boom Sonic. Now, hear me out. I also know how well that game was received, and show made it look like a comedy sitcom which seemed a little lighthearted compared to what the developers of the game wanted to go for, which I dig more over the alternative. Like I said before, the idea of Sonic and his friends are native animal-like explorers learning more of the world, their island, and history, kind of similar to Satayam and what that did, expanding its world. This probably might or might not happen. I mean, I've seen the concept art of how Amy looks. She seems to be more, well, taking some inspirations from her Sonic Boom counterpart, but seemingly wanting to make her more native or caveman, or in this case, woman-like. But that doesn't mean the concept should just automatically be thrown away. And hey, just another little suggestion, I'm hearing talks about getting a different cast for this show, specifically Canadian, which, by the way, I don't get it. Why should the Canadian government get involved of getting a whole cast of just Canadians? Now, don't get the wrong idea, I'm not against Canadian voice actors, I love some of them. Even the ones who voiced for the Sonic franchise, like Gary Chalk who voiced Robotnik, Maurice LaMarche who voiced Sleet, and Brian Drummond who voiced Knuckles. I have nothing against people from other nationalities getting voice roles, 
I just don't get limiting or overshadowing one nationality for a voice role over another. Anyways, on to the point. I would want Roger Craig Smith to voice Sonic. Here's my reasons, just hear me out. When he started voicing Sonic, I used to think it was unique, but after games like Sonic Lost World and Sonic Boom, it didn't sit well with some fans, and a little bit myself too. His voice range type just it doesn't sound like what some people think of when they think of Sonic, a teenager. With other voice actors like Ryan, Jason, Jaleel, and heck, even Martin, they seem to get that down. But Roger, and I'm pretty sure some people made this comparison before, but I think they are somewhat on to something. Like, he sounds more like a 30-something college graduate trying too hard to sound and show off to be cool without needing to tell. He more seems to fit serious sounding characters like Batman and Chris Redfield. They have more of an authority serious type sound voices. And Zonic throughout the comics is portrayed as a serious, no nonsense, on the job kind of character. Again, just a little suggestion, that's all. Number 5, Animation. This is the fifth thing I would want from Sonic Prime, the CGI animation. I want it to be something that's expressive and have energy. Wild Brain, I've seen how you handled the Mega Man show, and I just think you're close to making the animation fluid, but just need a little more effort on the character's movement, expression, and action. Take notes from Motor City, like, look at this scene of the show. Energy! High pumping adrenaline! I'm hooked on the show! I want to see what happens next! Flow is the word! It looks and feels nice! And take another show, like Nickelodeon's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2012 series, how they make their animation when they're fighting the Shredder. Incredible, right? Felt enticing, emotional, final stand of the fight, awesome. awesome! This is where Sonic Boom and maybe even the recent games from previous decade has failed at. They haven't seemed like they've evolved. Most of the times, it is just Sonic and his friends standing around and just occasionally spouting jokes that really don't land all that well. Sonic Boom was Sonic's first CGI animated show, and it didn't feel like it was well animated. It was CG, but barely have much expression, fluid animation, and at times, looked stiff. Again, I don't want to tell creators what to do, since I'm not in the industry and I'm not making the show, but I still think this can be valid criticism. Oh, and also, 
please let the intro and theme song for this show be something amazing and catchy while brain and man of action. Because I saw every episode of the intro and theme song of Mega Man Fully Charged. I'm just going to be straight with you. It's horrible. Please don't make it suck. Take some notes from Sonic Sat AM. I'm not saying take every word to word from that intro and theme song. I'm just saying don't make it a theme song where there's barely any lyrics and the main character is speaking while the music is playing in the background. Number 6 HEY! SEGA! CARE ABOUT THIS PRODUCT! Okay, so now this is my final last thing I want from Sonic Prime. And this is going to be targeted at you, Sega. Both of Japan and America. And I'm going to be much harsher at you on this one. And I'll explain later on why. And that is... BE FUCKING COMPETENT IN YOURSELF! CARE ABOUT YOUR PRODUCT! AND HAVE A CLEAR FOCUS VISION OF YOUR SHIT IN THIS SUPPOSED REBOOT OF YOUR FRANCHISE! Jesus. This is going to be a rant, people, and I'm going to be really hard on this company, so some of you might see my perspective of where I'm coming from, and maybe understandable for my reasoning. Remember Sonic Boom, Sega? And how horrible your treatment for that reboot series was? For some people not in the know, seven years ago, it was announced that Sega decided to reboot the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise with this new sub-franchise, Sonic Boom, to expand Sega's brand. With this picture showing the silhouette for the new look of the characters for this franchise, when the design and trailer for the game was revealed, it was met with some minor controversy, many memes, and so on. Some people were a little indifferent of the trailer, but I originally thought it looked a little promising at first. It showed Sonic and his friends, Amy, Tails, and Knuckles doing things, not sitting in the background after Sega's fuck up with this game. It was somewhat relieving, seeming like it was going to be 3D Sonic at its full potential, after the success of Sonic Generations. It seemed like Sega could go nowhere else but up from here. Short and to the point, the game Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric was a complete dumpster fire, with glitches and bugs and all its galore. Kind of clunky beat-em-up controls and terrible RPG implemented system, a pretty alright but kind of confusing mess of a story, and all around slow paced exploration, forgetting that it's a Sonic game who, if you didn't know about his history, was built on fast physics based gameplay originally. This as a whole killed the chance of Sonic Boom being its own thing, and tarnished the reputation of the franchise. The reasons the game was released in the state it was in is because of three key reasons. 1. Making the game a Wii U exclusive for Nintendo's partnership, even though the console wasn't that powerful enough to handle it. 2. Pitching a TV show that has a completely different and light-hearted narrative compared to the game, but even the game's narrative was poorly mishandled. And 3. You, Sega. Most of these problems were caused by your incompetence, your decision-makings for the world Big Red Button wanted to create, not to mention your horrible treatment of them when making the game and your complete lack of care for this franchise. To add more insult to injury, you actually thought people would pay for these DLCs of the glow-in-the-dark costumes after the reception of the game, which was also kind of foolish on your part as well. So, to recap, you fucked over the developers when making this game, you fucked over your fans by making this game only exclusive for a console barely anyone bought, and wanting to try to appeal to a new audience, and alienating the old ones who you should have been catering to, and you overall fucked over the franchise again because of story, gameplay, and executive meddling because of your indecisiveness. Great fucking job, Sega. The Sonic franchise is in really great hands because of your decisions. <sighs> Rant over. The reason I made Sonic Boom serve as an example is because I don't think Sega really learned anything from that. When releasing Sonic Colors Ultimate, which that'll be a video saved for you, Sega, for another 
Time was shown to also be an uncompleted mess, and they're following that up with another possible implied reboot for this franchise, and maybe might get a game based off of the series later on. Can anyone really certainly say that they really learned anything? But the thing is, I want to be proven wrong, and the show could be something more than what Capcom, Wild Brain, and Man of Action failed at with Mega Man for just trying to be basic kids show slot. And I'm tired of the, it's just a kids show, excuse. I've seen other kids shows based on some old properties that did much better than falling to generic kiddie show padding. And those are some of the things I want from Sonic Prime.